<laughs> what are you trying to do, Brad? Where do you want to be, Brad? Did you love the search for the perfect rental on a Friday night? Did your parents have all the premium channels so you watched movies you had no business watching at a young age? I know I did. Welcome to Mike and Anthony Soda Pop Culture Club. Me, Mike, along with my co-host, Anthony. (laughs) That's my skull. (laughs) Yes. Bring our take on a classic movie every Monday from the 80s, 90s, and beyond. (laughs) during which we will play the game and open up a six-pack of favorite scenes. We also point out a couple of generic scenes as well. And at the end of the show, we will rate the movie 1 to 24 cans. One can is Mr. Hand hogging your pizza. And 24 cans is Phoebe Cates exiting the pool, glistening and topless. (laughs) But before we get to all that, we want to let you know we have a Patreon. We want to encourage you to join it and help support the show For as little as $5 a month, you get bonus patron-only episodes and much more. We also plan on making uh, most of our back catalog patron-only, but if we can get 10 patrons by October, we won't do that at all. We will keep them up for all to hear, as we would like to do anyways. Or not. We might not. Eh, well, well, but if we get the 10, we definitely... Well, (laughs) we'll see. I want to make some decisions here. Hey. Plus, if you are a patron, we... (laughs) Patron, uh, we listen to your suggestions. So if you want us to do a movie, it would be a great way to get us to hear you is if you message, if you're a patron and you message us through Patreon, we'll probably listen to you and your movie will show up. But if you want to fast pass it and you still want to get your movie done, like right away, the next thing we do, then for $25, if you Venmo us or PayPal us at Soda Pop Culture Club, let us know what the movie is. We'll make that happen for you. Done. And not only do we have the Patreon, we also have our website, sodapopcultureclub.com, where you can buy some merch, make movie suggestions there as well, and see our schedule, which I think I'm going to have to update. I'm just going to say. I think so, too. (laughs) I really do. Because I look at it, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Because it's not updated. I'm like, yeah. Did you go to the website to find our schedule? I have checked several things i'm like what the fuck are we doing next <laughs> so he he's lost if he's doing that a couple more things don't forget to share the show with your friends check out our instagram at mike and anthem we post memes of dogs playing cards because that's what we like to do because that's funny actually we don't we actually make clever memes about the movies and you know just one of those things <laughs> finally we need you to go to apple Podcasts, hit us up for a five star or any star review really and a comment it would be super awesome and it helps the show out anthony do your thing what man. Up? my thing is play the clip all right i'll play the clip here we go again every time do your thing what are we doing you're gonna play the clip why am i and you're I, gonna shut I, your fucking am mouth am i fucking vamping for this <laughs> Am I vamping? Universal Pictures presents everything you always wanted to do in high school with everyone you always wanted to do it with. Hey, bud. Let's party. They're the students of Ridgemont High. Uh Brad Hamilton, the fast food king. I shall serve no fries before their time. It says 100% guaranteed, you moron. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kick 100% of your ass. Charles Jefferson. A man with a mission. Oh, gnarly! Linda Barrett. Not exactly the girl next door. Awesome! Totally awesome! And Jeff surfs up Spicoli. People on moods should not drive. was 
my skull. I'm so wasted. See Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, wow. There That's such an old Oh, my trailer. God. So old. It's a little better than um, last week's uh, Every Which Way But Loose, or was that what we oh, did yeah. last week? Yeah. yeah that, it, was... that trailer was like hot garbage compared to this. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> um, so here we go. Here's our breakdown by the numbers directed by Amy Heckerling. As you know, also did Clueless, Waka Waka. And starring Sean Penn, Jennifer Jason Lee, Judge Reinhold, Phoebe Cates, Nicholas Cage, Eric Stoltz, Forrest Whitaker, Anthony Edwards, Brian Backer, Robert Romanus or Romanus, Romanus, Ray Walston, Amanda Wiss or Weiss, my bad, Scott Thompson, and Vincent Chiavelli or Chiavelli, Chiavelli, I believe, or Chevelle, I don't know. Fast Times at Ridgemont High was released on August 13th, 1982, taking in $27.1 million at the box office domestically and $50 million total against a $5 million budget. It scores a 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb and 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. That that seems low to me, the, the, um, the money is taken in. The how much money it's made, but well, we gotta think it's had its life of its own after this. That probably it's yes, made exactly. way more money. This is like you think Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, I, I, I'm not comparing it to that per se, but that time period. I mean, yeah, those kind of movies. We don't yeah. have we don't have the promotion we have now, and Fast Times to me was. One of those movies where kind of like Clueless, even Clueless had a bigger promotional campaign. Yeah, but it did. You know, it's like when people see it, they get it and like, oh, shit. But then it's out of the theaters at that point. So, yeah, well, like back yeah. then, they would keep things in the theaters a lot longer. Than they do now. If you look the other way for too long, it's gone. I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's now. Gone. No, not, not right now. Yeah. Right now, with movies, COVID, unless they're unless no, they are these big no. hits that are out with COVID, they're keeping shit there forever. Well, some of our play. But, but when you well, I guess, well, you know, Spider-Man is still in the theaters in some way, but not yeah. as many showings like you, you barely can see it. And you can see it. Uh, you're right. going to be able to see it on your Disney Plus or whatever. Soon. I know, but it's funny, like you go, you drive past the theater and you're like, that's fucking out right now. Because they're yeah. they're playing shit that's been out forever. Because they don't have anything else to play. Because people don't make movies like that anymore. They're putting them on no, Netflix. No, it's just because whatever. like no, it's it's not just that. It's like with COVID and everything. It's like, well, I get it. Throw this up there. Hey, what COVID did was erode an already eroding culture yeah. of smaller movies being able to fill the theaters. Now it's only the big titles. And nothing else in between. You very it's, rarely get your your what's a fish fucking movie. You don't you don't get that anymore. You're probably not going to get that much anymore. The fish fucking, the one that won the Oscar where she fucked the fish. Finding Nemo. I, no, <laughs> I don't. that that movie would have been better if if it was a they did that threesome on Dory underwater. Wait, it would have been, been Finding Nemo, like Nemo. water or water or something. What is the Something like water. I don't know. I can't water, remember. Either way, water, let's get like into... water for elephants. No, I like that movie. Hey, um, I'm going to get into some facts about right. this, though. Okay, so Cameron Crowe, while a freelance writer for Rolling Stone, screenwriter Cameron Crowe spent a year secretly embedded at Claremont High School in San Diego, California, under an assumed name and in cooperation with the school's administration to gather story, stories for a nonfiction book with the same title. Crow's book was published in 1981. A year later, it was adapted for the screenplay. So it's interesting. Cameron Crow, we've done. That was almost famous. Yeah. And there's other movies we're going to do by him. Um, he's one of my favorite movie makers because he makes things that are just cool. They have a cool to them. You know, they he do. happens to be a part yes. of those projects. Okay. Now, this one's about Nicolas Cage, which 
This will tell you a little story here. Cage was originally supposed to play Brad, but the filmmakers relegated him to, to a background role after his improvisations during the auditioning process were deemed too weird. The credits list Cage as Nicholas Coppola. He later changed his last name professionally to avoid charges of nepotism. He is the nephew of director Francis Ford Coppola. And now he told me what I told you my story about that, right? What we have on our uh, previous podcast. Is that the one New Orleans one? No, when I was in New Orleans and we've seen where he's going to be buried. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you yeah. told us that. Yeah, yeah. And then but the no, tour guide okay. telling us about him. Because I had a further thing I was going to add to this. I was like, are you about walls? to? Yeah, the poop guy. Uh, yeah. I thought you were going to add to the thing that I was about to say. And I was like, wow, you know the thing I'm about to say. But no, you don't. Okay, so. Uh, I also, do because I saw the notes, but I'm not going to add to it. Not this. I don't think it's in here. Um. He, now he was so pretentious and was such a name dropper and such an egotist on the set that all the other people uh, didn't like him. And they say that that's the real reason he went from Coppola to Cage because yeah. it may left a bad taste in his mouth after the shooting. Just, just a little that's thing. Now, good to know. Yeah. And maybe it worked out for him because he has an Oscar and he's been in a lot of and movies. Okay, if he and he's still Nicolas Cage, so. Yeah, he's he's still rich and famous and all that. So uh, can here's I give one a shout your... out? Can I give a shout out? Yeah, to my wife, if she listens to this one. Okay, the Wicker Man, the Wicker Man. Okay, whatever. Yes. She hates I don't that care movie. about that. Okay, so <laughs> this is for you that I'm about to say. Pamela Springsteen yes. plays the dark haired oh, yeah. cheerleader on the left during the pep rally, right <laughs> in the late '80s. She uh, she would. Uh, Ah, pardon me. In the late '80s, she would go on to find cult horror movie fame as the villainous Angela in Sleepaway Camp Two: Unhappy Campers from 1988 and Sleepaway Camp Three: Teenage Wasteland in 1989. Do you nice. like all those? I love Sleepaway Camp Two, for sure. Yeah. Let me also okay. tell you, in the pep rally, the head cheerleader. Yeah. Chopping mall. Oh, she's she's one of the people, kids that were drinking and partying. She's the main girl that survives in Chopping Mall. Wow, she doesn't lose her head or anything. All right, and she was also in Night of the Comet. Okay, so you want you're some more? That shit. Do you want some more? I got no, more. But I, no, I've got one more fact here. Uh, right. This movie has no instrumental score, so like, there's no like, you know. Dun, 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 you know, all that shit in the background. No, when they did it, everything was a needle drop. And what a needle drop is where they play no. actual pop music. All right. Everything about this movie is side two of Led Zeppelin four. Everything. OK, are you ready to play the game, man? Are you ready for uh, this? Of course I am. I'm always ready. All right. Here we go. Let me hit this. Cover your screen. <laughs> All right, we're going to play the game. The game is I'm going to read three reviews. Two of them are real. One of them is fake. And he has to guess the fake one. If he guessed the real one, that would be just too easy, wouldn't it? And you two can play along. You can see if I fake you out as well. So here we go. Are you ready for this? Fuck me in the goat ass. That is not one of the reviews. Let me read the first one. <laughs> John J. Puccio, Movie Metropolis. Largely prosaic crude, stereotyped, and pointless. Jake Biggs, Chicago Tribune. How could they put such a bright ray of sunshine like Jennifer Jason Lee into a sleaze fest of a movie? Kevin A. Ranson, MovieCrypt.com. Sean Penn's calling never left Mr. Hand's classroom. What was the last one? The last one is... How could they put such a bright ray of sunshine? Oh, pardon me. I, I can't fucking read my own shit. Kevin A. Ronson. Pardon me. Kevin A. Ronson. Sean Penn's calling never left Mr. Han's classroom. Wow. That's harsh. I'm going to go with the second one. Why is that? Because Jake Biggs sounds familiar. Jake Briggs. Oh, Briggs. I thought you said Biggs. 
No, it said Jake Briggs. Well, I'm going to go with that anyway. Okay, well, I'm going to eliminate John J. Puccio. He is real. Okay. All right. He said largely prosaic, crude, stereotyped, and pointless. Okay. And you are right. It actually is Jake Briggs. Briggs. Because that yes. is the main character's name, and she's having a baby. Wow. It sounded familiar, even though I thought Biggs, but yes. You know what? So- <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I probably would have picked that anyways because I would have thought of Jason Biggs. But I but I want to tell you something. Biggs. The review itself is real. I just put a fake name on the review. Oh, well, good job. You lost. So you picked the real... It's a real review with a fake name and I still fucking lost in this particular hey, one. Hold so. on. Now, now you're fucking cheating, though. That you, was a cheat. It was, the a, whole cheat. Point, it was a cheat. No, the whole point of this game... No, no, no. You did. The whole point of this game is you write a fake review. That's what it's been since oh, fucking I, day one. Actually, to be fair, it's two reviews hey. put in one. I, I well, matched yeah. up a matchup review. The whole time you said, I write a fake review. I added something to it and changed it yeah, up. Yeah, you bit. failed. You failed. I succeeded. No, you, you won. Failed. So what the fuck is your problem? It doesn't matter, though. I wanted a game that didn't exist because you did not write a fake review. Don't be an asshole. Toilet water drinking douchebag. Who's a toilet water drinking douchebag? Not me. That's you. That's you. Okay. Are you ready, man? I'm ready. Let's get this on. Brad Hamilton is a senior at Ridgemont High School and looks forward to his final year of school. He has a job at All American Burger and plans to break up with his girlfriend, Lisa, so he can be completely eligible during his senior year. His perfect life is threatened after an exchange with an obnoxious customer results in his firing from All American Burger. When Brad tries to tell Lisa how much he needs her, she informs him that she wants to break up with him to date other guys. Brad gets a job at Captain Hook Fish and Chips, but quits in humiliation when a beautiful older woman laughs at him wearing a pirate costume while making a food delivery. Adding insult to injury, he is also caught masturbating by Linda in the bathroom wearing the pirate outfit. Boom. So we're not doing this movie in order. We're just going over the characters. So if you wonder why we went to that. That's that's a lot of the movie. A lot of shit. But we're just covering Brad here. So, and a couple other things, because I want to say this first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to throw out um, Brad's girlfriend. Yeah. I know who she is. Also, Tina from A Nightmare on Elm Street. So we got a lot of oh, horror movie connections here. There's that, but also the the girlfriend in Better Off Dead that in breaks Better up Off with Dead, John yes, Isaac's character, but which is an excellent as, movie, and we will do horror. As far as horror stuff, yeah, there you go. Uh, but I was gonna say I love the opening of this movie. It's it's like a time capsule of an '80s I saw on TV, but I never got to experience myself as much. Like like we had the malls and stuff, but. I don't know about you. I lived in a small town, so I saw all that and I knew it existed. Yeah. But it wasn't something that was my day to day life. It was rare that I got to experience what I saw in there. We had a mall and it was awesome, but we didn't have that mall. Oh, where, that, the Galleria. Yeah. When you've got more than one floor and you're like, holy shit. This is this is like Polaris. It's epic. <laughs> Polaris it's is pretty epic. nice. epic. <laughs> Polaris is great, but like this is like when you see this as a kid, you're like, why don't we have that? Well, and, and it's in so many other movies. We already did uh, Commando, and it's yes. the same fucking mall yes, in Commando. Exactly. <laughs> and we like we have that, and you know, you see that, and it, it, it's really sad because we don't have that anymore. I mean, we do in some areas. More, they're more like towns, like little town, like I like. Feel like uh, Places where the shops are side by side, they're not in a building. You're like outdoors right. more. Yeah. And this is what pisses me off. I feel like we've got Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter. Yeah. Like, dude, why don't you put that money into building malls? <laughs> Bring commerce back. Uh... Bring the brick and mortar shit back. Get people interacting socially. I would agree. That's the problem that we have is that now we're ordering so much online. It's killing a lot Which, of that commerce. Guilty. And yes. What, we're all guilty of it. But what's funny is I remember one time my daughter's like, man, I'd like to go see this first and try it out. And I'm like, well, if you wouldn't, 
if your generation wouldn't uh, be uh, so much online with everything, you'd probably well, have a fucking store to go look at this. And that sounds yeah. like an old boomer in me, but uh, I, I feel the same way. Like my wife, she orders stuff online. Yeah. Returns it. If she doesn't like it, doesn't fit whatever the way she wants. And I'm like, to me, I'm like, that's so much of a fucking hassle. It and is. I get you, you order it online. I get that. Yeah. And it's convenient, but I'm like, isn't it more inconvenient to have to fucking box shit up or whatever and send it back? It is. It's, it's, like, it's as convenient in a different way. Cause just, now you have like, to wait how many days it is to get it. Right. If you want to replace it. And what, if you would just gone to the store that day, want, it'd have been done. Go. I want to go to the store. I want to look around at shit, even though I, here's my problem. I hate people. <laughs> I I hate crowds. I hate people because they piss me off. Because there's always one dipshit that just pisses you off. I so would agree. I, I that do is... hate that aspect of it, but I do enjoy the experience of going to the store, looking at shit on the rack, on the shelf, picking something out. But yeah, yeah. But I just want to say you are also the same person that paid your bills by money order forever and bullshit. No, I did not pay by money order. Check or money order, whatever the fuck you did. Into the Rite Aid. God damn you. That's it. That's That's all I got to say. So let's get back to the movie. So Brad. Fuck, dude. Like, (laughs) why you got to bring that shit up? My wife. You brought it up in a former episode. And no, bring it up. You you brought it up at a a previous episode, by the way. Um, I did. God damn it. Uh, so right. Brad is interesting to me. Like he, he's acting so successful uh, because of his status at a fast food place. Like uh, he makes Six it, more he, payments. He makes it sound like he made it. Like <laughs> what's going to happen when he grabs and is all mine. Is, is he peaking in life because he's going to graduate and be the assistant well, manager at a fast food place? You know, it's really funny. It's like, uh, it's so funny because Brad is like, he is the one person in this movie. Like he should be the most successful. You would think. Yeah. He's when real. You're looking at everybody he's else. Real. Like he's legit. He's a nice guy. Yeah. He's got a good job, but yeah, he tries. Like he works hard. I, here's the thing with Brad though. Like you think about it, it's like, does he have goals? What are his goals? That's it. That's I what that's I don't get. It. It's like, he really <laughs> doesn't have goal? any, even though he's like kind of like the best person in this movie. His goal is to be What's single. His goal? And his goal is to be single and be and literally at the top like, of the food chain of all American yes, burger. <laughs> because then he goes to meet his guidance counselor. And he's like, I'm waiting for the fun to start. So it's like, well, but what are you trying to do, Brad? <laughs> what are you trying to do, Brad? Where do you want to be, Brad? Brad, I know where he wants bro, to be. what do you want? I know where he wants to be, but he's not going to get there. He's not going to get in Phoebe Kate's bikini. But we'll get to like, that. Brad, what do you want? I mean, like, I know you want to work at All American Burger and go to the point with that's Tina it. from Night Round Street. But that's it. Lisa in this movie. But. But all I want to say is Brad, he's successful and his friend is really mad and bitching about Bronco Burger and he's bitching about the nuggets. Did you know this movie came out in 1982? The Chicken McNugget for McDonald's didn't come out until 1983. So it makes me wonder who had them out first that they had him in this movie and he was bitching about them. Do you love the, the conversation though? What's in the secret sauce at Mighty Burger? Oh, Thousand Island ketchup dressing, mayonnaise, ketchup. Ma- oh yeah, that's it's awesome. disgusting. It's disgusting. I hate the. I hate. I hate mayonnaise. So it's so you won't catch good, me. <laughs> you, I bet you would eat ketchup and mayonnaise if nobody told you what it was. No, nah, I wouldn't have. Mm, I would know that. Talk. I could. I could taste the tanginess of that mayonnaise, and it just. Ah, oh, God! You're just like cheese, a, I could taste that you, cheese, and it's like. Uh. And I hope everybody listening knows how fucked up you are. You don't like cheese. That's okay. It's okay. Not even the mayonnaise part. Mayonnaise, I, I can understand because I know a lot of people. You that can put a pizza mozzarella on my burger. I'd be fine with it. I don't like mayonnaise, and that's fine. 
Maybe it's the white creamy texture, even though I think it's weird for you because I the... thought you liked that. But cheese, motherfucker, cheese. Just Come as on. I can taste, I can taste it, and it just ugh. And it's delicious. Cheese it's is not delicious. so good. Now I want to get. I want to get back to our single right. successful guy. Okay. He's so successful. He's in the bathroom cleaning big pussy off the mirror. <laughs> and when now when he comes out to to the front and he gets in with that customer that they talk about where he gets fired. Well, are you on Brad's side or the customer side on this? I know what you're supposed to think. Oh, well, okay. So it's kind of funny. Like I've watched this movie a million times. Who and it's always on Brad's side. Always on Brad's side. Always. But always. But then watching it again at first, the customer is kind of a dick. But yeah, at the same time, it's like I feel like the way they did it. This is not the best breakfast I ever had. That's kind of that's where you're it's like, a bullshit promise. It's, <laughs> it's it bullshit. is it is it's totally like this right there is like like uh, falling down. Yeah. Like <laughs> that movie's great. It doesn't <laughs> look like that. This is like that could have been that scene. <laughs> look, it looks all pretty and all like but the whole this when you say this is where we get the fucking Karen's of the world and people like this is not the best I've ever had. But also it's like but then he when he it's like this is the part this is the problem. When the manager comes out, he's like, it was a little undercooked. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Yeah, that's not what he told Brad. But here's what I'll say. Once the guy started pushing Brad, I lost Brad when his hubris took over. And what I mean is Brad thinks he has it so together he could get it done uh, on his own. He should have said, you know what? I'm not getting this right. He's pushing I, me in a direction I can't. He should have just went and got the manager and said, could you yeah. hold here? I'm going to get the manager. And then the manager could have done it and you would have had no problems. I I do disagree with that only for the reason that I think this was to show that Brad had a lot of shit going on. So it wasn't about that. It was about I've got. He gets up at what time in the morning to go fucking. I get like, you know, I think it's more to show that I get what you're saying, but I think it's more like motherfucker. I ain't slept but four hours and <laughs> but bitch. I will say this the manager me, stick my little fingers in the <laughs> drawer and sh- fuck you, motherfucker. I'm done. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Although the manager should have fired him in back. He should have said, Brad, if you want to go in the back and oh. wait for me, that should have been but, what happened. You don't fire in front of people and the customers and other employees. That's the not- manager should have been fired for how he looked. With that oh stupid well, back at, back mustache. then that was a good look. I mean, he had he had his shit going on. That was on never there, a good look. No, it was bad. You would you would like to ride that mustache? I'm pretty sure. Fire. <laughs> now, the last thing that happens to Brad, pretty much in this movie, that I mean, there's some other things, but we'll talk about it with uh, his sister. But this particular thing, and I'm going to give my six pack on it because this All is right. a six pack for sure. And that is when Brad gets caught masturbating. But before that, it's really the topless Phoebe Cates that we get to see. And that, that didn't is, happen. You know, it was just yeah. in Brad's mind. But but it happened in the film, so we got to see it. Yeah. <laughs> it really, that happened. It just didn't happen. Like, you know, that's not. But that was him. But Brad, you know, he was jerking the gherkin to her, you know. But she should jerking have knocked. Gherkin. She should have knocked. He is right. Don't people knock anymore? You don't just walk into a bathroom that's closed. If a bathroom is closed, you knock. That's just the courtesy. You know what? You lock the bathroom door. Okay. That? Well, yeah, you should. But at the same time, a closed hey, bathroom door, always knock. I want to give a personal story here. Okay, go ahead. Just because. Were you caught masturbating to Phoebe Cates? No. Okay. But to every everyone listening, so... Uh, this is kind of a little bit of a long story. We are moving back to Ohio, my family. So we're last week, actually, we were going to go fly back for actually your daughter's 
graduation party. Yes. And my youngest son got sick, puking for three days. So I had to stay home with him. So we're there. My wife is in Ohio. And (laughs) you tell my wife to tell me to just chill out, have a glass of wine and watch Phoebe Cates stripping on fast times. (laughs) <laughs> Why did I, what did I tell her that for? You, she said, you said, tell him to have a glass of wine and watch oh, yeah, cakes yeah. on past times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is great. It's that. like, you know, there's, there's actually nothing wrong with that to tell somebody, Hey, <laughs> I didn't do it, but to tell somebody like, relax, loosen up, <laughs> have a glass like, of wine, watch Phoebe Kate. Cause you know what? It, it does make sense. It's like, Hey, if you're stressed out, do that. Wine, <laughs> beer, what have you. Watch Phoebe Cates getting out of the pool. It'll make you feel better. That music too. Dun 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 um, are you ready for this? Are you ready to move on to yes. Stacy? All right, go ahead. Go to Stacy now. So Brad's sister, Stacy, is a 15-year-old freshman and a virgin. Dun dun. Who only learned how to give head by sucking on a carrot. We'll get into that. She works at a pizza parlor at Ridgemont Mall with her older friend Linda Barrett. Barrett. Stacy, with prompting from Linda. Goes on a date with Ron Johnson, a 26-year-old stereo salesman. She sneaks out of her house for a date with him and loses her virginity that night in the dugout of a baseball field. So sad. She later tells Linda about the experience, stating how much it hurt. (laughs) Linda offers advice to Stacy on the matter, which she often does. The more worldly and experienced of the two. Ron sends her flowers the next day because that's a classy move. Uh, Yeah, it is a classy move. It is very classy. Of course, I think this movie skips some time and eventually he doesn't ever, you know. uh, Yeah, but but what's worse about the Ron thing is the pickup lines working hard or hardly working. Uh, <laughs> but a meatball sandwich <laughs> and your phone number. I was gonna say it would be so bad if he didn't do that. Like you know oh, that. God. It, here's what like, I was there, thinking. You can't say it wouldn't be so bad if there is nothing about him. You could say it wouldn't be so bad if because my question bad. for you was going to be: Is this Damone in like six years working in the mall at a stereo shop? You know, trying to pick up underage girls in a pizza shop. No. Why not? Because we already saw what happens to Damone. I don't know. I don't accept that. We'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't accept that. He's working at Seven Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I want to say Linda to me is bad for Stacy, and that's and that's because. Oh, no. And I'm not saying that girls can't be sexual, but to me. Linda is casual sexual at an age where the consequences are magnified, which we learn later. I so so that to me is the problem. You know, what? I do. I will agree with that only because. Um, well, I do. It's more like Stacy is like I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. That's that's more the problem there. Yeah, yeah. It's that's not, it's not Linda is, which you know you pick your friends. Yeah, well, Linda, kinda. Linda is. She's giving her Linda isms. <laughs> Stacy is like, okay, whatever you say, ten four or six nine or whatever, over and out. <laughs> Stacy's just like, I'm gonna do what I'm told. But yeah, I get it. But here's here's what I don't like about Stacy, and I'm gonna give my generic now. Right. You probably like this scene. Okay. <laughs> And that is the the there there's no way girls are practicing blowjobs at the lunch table. I don't care in what reality that we're living in. I want to and I want to call Linda out on not going sh- as as going shallower than Stacy. Her carrot did not go in as far as Stacy's carrot. 
That's all I'm going to say. And I doubt this type of scene actually ever happens in, in public with real people. Like, And what makes it strange is it's a female director showing this point of view. It makes me wonder if they shot the script or if this was a, an improvisation of something they want to do at the thing if, or if this is actually the script. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. You didn't sit, n- neither did I, at the girls' lunch table. We don't know what the fuck was going on there. Yeah. I mean, keep that in mind. We really we didn't sit with girls at the lunch table. You and I were sitting at dork lunch tables talking about fucking Mario and shit. Actually, I was not. I was usually playing basketball at lunch. Okay. But go ahead. Well, you were once sitting, again. You weren't I sitting was not at lunch as table. dorky as you think I was. <laughs> oh, you saw, but that's fine. But what I'm saying is, were you sitting at an all girls lunch table? Uh, no, no, I was not. Were um, you watching their carrots? No, you don't know what happened there. But I do have a story here. I have a friend who was sitting at one of those tables and he overheard <laughs> someone say something about me that was very positive. So what the fuck does that have to do with anything? I'm just saying I once had a good rumor about <laughs> me and my sexual prowess. This at a lunch time. table when I was not there. And I was like, and he said, man, this is like the weirdest thing. I remember him telling me that he was like, I, I never thought I would ever hear this. And then he said, and I didn't want to hear what they said. So about was, your sexual prowess. Yeah. You don't have the sexual prowess. I'm, I'm 47 now, but back then I was, <laughs> God, I was young, dumb and so, full of testosterone. Anyway, again, it is what it is. I I I totally see girls talking about crazy shit like that. The I chamber. do, but not in this setting. That's all. I, I oh, can I see do. them, you know, they're over at her house in the pool and they have a couple bananas and they're like sitting around, you know, doing their best Kirk Cameron impression with a banana, I guess. No, or I, I, I kind of feel like it's one of those things where I think it's talked about at the lunch table especially more than i think you have a fantasy about this rather than not at all i'm saying like i think no you're in high school this is where you get a chance to talk about shit at the lunch table not anymore now they have instagram snapchat they can well no but back then online forums right back then before that this is true you're gonna talk about this shit because this is where during the day the school day you get to hang out with people talk to them i get i'll give you this it probably did happen more yeah i think so than i want to but less than what that makes it look like in the movies these days but you have a generic i do i do let's go into it let's go into it hit me because this is where we hit this oh god ron johnson is a douchebag wrapped in a douchey leather jacket he basically fucking shames Stacy into putting out by calling her out on her age and daring her to prove she's 19. Fuck that pussy ass motherfucker leather <laughs> jacket wearing fucking rapist. I, 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 I oh my I, God. I agree. I, I agree that he is shit. He know. but here's the thing. I think Fuck. he knows her age. Or at the least knows she is underage. Exactly. I will credit him for asking the age one more time, but he had to know. And that, but he didn't uh, ask. That was daring. But what's worse than that even is where he takes her. And plus, my last thing on this scene is how does Jackson Brown feel about his song being the underage sex song? Uh, <laughs> and, I don't even know. Like, and the follow up. And to me, the other thing, the follow up where it hurt bad thing with Linda, where she does that, that to me also was an unnecessary scene. Didn't need to have it. It wasn't it. It didn't because it, it, it really was just a walk in the hallway split second scene where she's oh, and it hurts so bad, you know, and it really hurt. That's no, that's it was a throwaway scene. That didn't need not, to be in there. No, that's not unnecessary. Could just said, yeah, I slept with them and not completely disagree. Oh, You're whatever. Not a girl, you're not a girl. Well, you are in a lot of ways, but you're not a girl. Now, now 
No, 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 hold on. No, 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 don't go past this. Like, that is a thing. You're not a girl. Like, I swear Nate. to God, sometimes you do have a vagina, but you don't have a hymen. So you don't understand that. That I yeah, don't. That hurt. I, I will not. I want. I will understand that if female anatomy is a mystery to both you and I. Right, and but I do know things. that it does hurt because I have Google. I don't. Dickhead. I, it may be uncomfortable. I that's, don't know. I'm not going to make an assumption. Not, uh, again, that's I'll let not, each person tell me their experience and I'll right, figure it out from but there. Amy Heckerling told us about the experience in this movie. So don't just. I get it. it. But we no, didn't need don't. to hear about it. No, you we didn't don't. need to hear about it. You don't. I'm no, yes, we did. It was no, unnecessary. Don't say I get it because all you do is, oh, what did it add hard. to the movie? What but did it add to the movie? hard and it felt good afterwards. That's it. That's what, all guys what, get. That's what, it. Oh, man. What did it add oh. to the movie is what I want to know. I don't understand what it added to the movie. It added her fucking experience. It hurt. And it was with a douchebag in a leather jacket on top of me in a fucking in a dugout. baseball dugout. Reading the graffiti on the ceiling. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are you Shut ready up. to go on? Are you ready? I, are you? Because I'm like not done with this right now because you're being a dick. And not I'm done with it. women and their hymens. I am not. I don't want to talk about the hymen anymore. Mike Damone is a smooth talker who earns money taking sports bets and scalping concert tickets. He fancies himself a worldly ladies man. His shy best friend, Mark Ratner, works as an usher at the movie theater across from the pizza parlor at the mall. When Mark develops a crush on Stacy, Damone lets Mark in on his five secrets for picking up girls. Damone later persuades Mark to ask Stacy out on a date, which he does. Afterwards, at her home, Stacy invites Mark into a room where they look at her photo album together. They begin to kiss, but a nervous Mark abruptly leaves after Stacy attempts to seduce him. She mistakenly interprets his shyness as disinterest, of course, because that's what they do. Linda quickly <laughs> advises her to move on and find another boy. I mean, that's what Linda would do. After Mike walks her home, Stacy becomes interested in Damone. She invites him into her pool, which quickly leads to them having sex in the pool house during which he ejaculates very quickly. Wow. Yes. Yeah, this is a, this is, there's a lot here for Stacy. This is a lot. Cause she is the main arc of the movie as we talked about. Right. Yes. Yeah. She, she is, she is the main arc of the movie. Yeah. Um, but what I like about Damone particularly, cause he gets brought up here first is how he's selling tickets to those kids. And my question was this, like those kids go there and they buy these tickets from, but how do they get to the concert? Like even in the eighties, you couldn't just disappear to a rock concert got, at that age. Cause they looked maybe 12. You got friends that drive you. Right. Was it, no. So, um, remember days and confused. Yes. Got my brother's car. Oh, okay. There's always somebody to, and this was in the seventies. That was, yeah. Too. There's always somebody's car or a brother. You got a that person can drive you. You got somebody. You got somebody. Okay. If you've got, I think what they did probably was they bought an extra ticket and it was like, and hey, you say hey, yeah, you take us, you get a take ticket, us. yeah. Yeah. But why? But those people probably want to get high at the concert, and you don't want to do it with a couple of twelve year olds. <laughs> Well, no, there it's like, fuck you getting home. Oh, that's, that's done. If we had Wooderson or some weirdo like that came over from Texas, yeah. that's probably what could happen here. Um, you know, it's Uber would have changed this movie completely. <laughs> I do want to say this. Damone uh, getting further in him. I actually think he was a great friend because he gives him pep talks and advice. And he gets him to get her number. Well, he was a great friend all up until, you know, obviously all he breaks until, the guy code. Yeah. So he breaks the guy code. But I have a six pack here because I love what he tells Ratner yeah. on this. There we go. And his six pack is the attitude. Come, stays, lays, or prays. Whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. <laughs> That's the attitude. Uh, Mike Damone has, a, he has some of the best lines in this movie. That's just I, how I it love is. that you put it out to a million girls. <laughs> Yeah, you put it out there, man. And that's the attitude, man. You that's don't care if she comes, stays, lays, or prays. Whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. <laughs> that's he should have been a DJ. Mark. He should have been a DJ, shouldn't he? 
I'm going to give you your six pack. Are you ready? Yes, my six pack. I got to say, Damone's mini bar in his bedroom. Yes. Like, that's epic. Like, for a high school kid. That's amazing. And I'm like, I'm looking at that. You know, he makes a drink for Ratner. I'm like, (laughs) do his parents just not go in his room or do they not give a shit? Probably don't give a shit. Like what the hell? Well, and it makes me wonder too, because I'm like, maybe they don't give a shit because I'm like, he just got a girl pregnant and he can't go pay for the abortion. And they're like, he's helping his father in the garage because that's what he told us to say. So fuck. I mean, I I actually am like I, get, <laughs> so I, true. I forgot I, about that part where the mother's I already, like, he's up in the I know. garage. It's like I already gave my generic because of Dickhead Johnson. My other generic could have been Demone's parents. Cause like what the yeah. <laughs> not involved in his life. What are you doing? How are you parenting? <laughs> he has a bar in his bedroom. And he knocked a girl up in the pool house. He runs a book. No fucking clue what's going on. Nothing. He runs a sports book. You don't even know. (laughs) He's trying to fucking shortchange kids on going to Earth, Wind, and Fire. You motherfucking douchebags. Blue Oyster Cult is the one they asked for that one. Where were you last week when I had 25 pairs or whatever it was? I was working at 7 Eleven. (laughs) <laughs> almost was working there yeah but you know the one thing damone does tell my uh um mark uh, uh ratner is the five point plan do you know the five i have it on the notes i probably right, yeah i already right know now. but yeah no okay go ahead with well, what's i already know act like no. anywhere you are it's the greatest place to be sounds great <laughs> find out what you want to order what she wants and then you order for the both of you the, the lady will have the linguine and clam sauce and a Coke with no ice. I'm not even looking at this, by the way, just so you know. Well, you missed two of them already. I haven't. I'm not done. And anytime, play side two of Lep Zeppelin four. Side one. Side of one. Zeppelin. Was it side one or side two? Side one. Side one. That's my bad. I'm sorry. Because side one probably has Stairway to Heaven on it. And that's. Probably why he picked that one. But never let on how much a, how much you like a girl and always call the shots. Always call the shots. That's great. Just saying. So he had, a, I mean, he gave good advice. I yeah, would say the bad, the bad part or of that, he the gave ordering. Good advice. The, yeah, the ordering really? for the both of them. They kind of did. No, he didn't. Why? What fucking decade are you living in? Well, for then, this was good advice. It probably worked. Order for the both of you. No, except for that one. That's the one caveat. I would say that one doesn't necessary. But Always, the other one. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Always call the shots. Yeah, that's I. And really, what that is to me is be confident and be the one who's saying yes. This is what we're doing, and you know, I think that's more of a confidence. I don't always call the shots. Yeah. No, that's that's. Oh God! You want to go out on a date? I'll call the shots, bitch. I can't fucking talk to you sometimes. Our next date, I'm calling the shots. I, <laughs> I just here's the thing, though. God, but you, after this that, this is they, why you suck as a human. But later on, they go. The, the Mark Ratner goes on the date, and I want to know what restaurant they're at where they have those giant fucking red chairs that you sit in, because those do not look easy to move up to the table. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They were the high back shit. Look like something the Mad Hatter would sit in. I don't even know. Um, well, I think it's one of those like you're gonna have a lot of not worse tonight. <laughs> and I don't you know, it was like, oh gosh, I'm so full on not worse. And <laughs> what's, what's going oh I just gotta sit back, but I can't push my chair back. Ugh. And wait, now- yeah, I'll have another Coke. Yeah, well, the reason they're doing that, though, is because he forgot his wallet and he called uh, Damone. Damone. Now, when Damone comes and gives him his wallet, that was a solid. Like I say, he is a good friend. But I, I uh, lo- <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I love Damone when he eats that pepper. This yeah. <laughs> juice everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he does. laughs> it's so stupid, but so funny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I come here for the strudel. 
<laughs> but but uh, but what's funny is he kind of gives her the vibe at that moment too, though. Did you notice that? That's the attitude. Yeah, he gave out the attitude there. But uh, later on, you know, you. Ratner goes in, and I think as uh, when we were young, we all had nervousness around being with uh, a, a girl, even if, if it was the first time specifically for Ratner. And I kind of felt for him, you know, and I, and I respected him for how he was with her, you know. We uh, it, it didn't feel it, like he he's nervous about it, and she's just too confident and too eager to go. No, 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 no. I hold on, I disagree with that. She was in a different place. He I, think of it know, like there, no, he's not no, ready. No, she's ready. That's how no, it is. No, no, no. I I disagree that I'm just gonna say he was nervous. She. I'm not going to say she was confident. She was still, again, doing what she thought she was supposed to do. That's I know. She, because you know of bad saying. advice. It wasn't confident. From uh, Linda. That's what I'm saying. She wasn't confident. She's still not confident. She was doing what she thought she was supposed to do based on Linda's advice. So she's just like... In that area, it's like I get it. This is what I think I'm supposed to do because I've been told that. I get it. That's okay. why. And and he, but she's in a place where she's more comfortable in doing that, and he's in a not. He's just not there yet. He's still, you know, he needs to. But it's like a lot of guys at that time need to be drugged to that thing. Sometimes there are some guys who don't, but there are a lot of guys who do because they're afraid of overstepping too much. Like it, it's it's a thing where they're actually that nice of a guy that mm-hmm. they can't do that without being told explicitly, Hey, we're going to do this. And so I, when you look at this movie at that point, I don't want to use this word, but I'm going to, would people call her a slut back then? They, they may have because of, I, and, I don't think they would have but, called her one until after Damone though. True. Yeah. That's, I, I, think, I don't. I think after Demone, you call. Anybody, she's a victim, but, but she's a victim. But but I, I'm, actually, she's a victim. I don't know that she would ever be a slut in a situation because well, maybe she thought that was the only way to get a guy, and then she was a victim by an older is man. She, she a victim? She was a victim, even though in the movie you don't make that sense. But yeah, yeah but again, it, she she was, and yeah. But then and, is she a victimizer afterwards? Because she's like, that's hey, just, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mark I don't know. Radner. Being the victim first made her turn into something. Maybe she wouldn't have been. But then she's all like, along. Mark Radner, get my vagina. Now, so if she just said that, yeah, I think he would have. It, it, <laughs> and I, I'm not making light of that. I'm just like, it's it's crazy. Like that. You he know, wasn't there yet, though. Even if she said that, I don't know if that, he would have been like, ready. It's it's crazy. Like to look at her character and like all you did was you're listening to somebody else and thinking that's what you're supposed to do to Linda. Like, yeah, peer pressure is a bitch, man. It is. It is. You know, I want to go into a fact though. Crow based the geeky rat on then Claremont high school student, Andy Rathbone Rathbone eventually became rich and famous for writing many of the, dot 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 for dummies books so like you know computers for dummies shit like that books about computer programs like windows so he wrote like windows for dummies that dude he wins in life if that's a real guy he may have not got stacy that night but he got whatever he wanted he got stacy's mom stacy's mom got it going going on (laughs) all right you're up buddy so stacy later informs damone that she has gotten knocked up she asked for him to cover half the cost 75 dollars of an abortion and provide her with a ride to the clinic and he agrees initially however unable to come up with his half because he checked his fan duels and his account was empty and all that shit damone abandoned stacy on the day of her appointment she lies and asks her brother Brad to drive her to a bowling alley to meet her friends. But he sees her cross the street to an abortion clinic. Duh, duh, duh. Brad 
waits for Stacy and he confronts her about the abortion. Stacy makes Brad promise not to tell her parents. When Stacy tells Linda that Damone abandoned her and did not pay his half, Linda becomes furious. The next day, Damone finds his car spray painted with the word prick and his school locker painted little prick. As revenge, it's crazy. She is out for fucking blood because she is pissed off. He's a gremlin to her. Mark confronts Damone about his involvement with Stacy. This ends their friendship because they were about to go fucking cockfighting in the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to say, you know how uh, you just said prick and little prick. Do you think the prick on the car was because the car is a big thing and the little prick is because the locker is a little thing? I don't know. I don't know. I think <laughs> I think it was the first thing and then like, oh, wait, I got to add to this little prick. Very ingenious. Um, but th- I want to say this. This is a th- with this movie. This is a really big deal for the time that this came out. People need to understand. With, and with how things are now in our country, it continues to be a big deal. These subjects that are in these movies, because we talked a little about this in Dirty Dancing. Oddly enough, we've now done two movies that yes. tackle the subject of a portion. But here's the thing. I, I assume everyone's experience with an abortion is extremely personal and the range of emotions can be vast. Yeah. I, I think I do think Stacy being 15 could have had, to me, a deeper emotional response because it seems I, I don't know if we saw the breakdown of the character as as much as we should right, have. Right, right. Like, I didn't think she got as low. Not, But like I said, it can be vast, so I could be wrong. She may be numb to it. Well. But but it feels like it should have been more. So, and I, so when I say this, I don't, I don't want to say it to ever pretend that I could ever understand that, because I can't. We okay. don't. That's why I said it could be can't. I can't. It could vast but, array of emotions. Right. We don't know what they are. I am looking at this in the vacuum that is this movie and Stacy's character. So, like I said earlier, I feel like she is kind of looking at this from how it went. She's kind of doing what she thinks she should do from Linda's advice, okay? Here's this is you, also Linda's advice. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Here's how you suck off a carrot. Okay. This is what we went from to yeah. pretend you're old enough. Get that Rob motherfucking leather jacket, bitch. Do it. Yeah. And then it's like, well, I have to get an abortion. But it was also Damone, like, we have to take care of this. We have to get an abortion. Yeah. It's, Stacy's character is like, I'm doing what people are going to tell me to do. I feel there's a lot of therapy you know? in her future uh, yeah, to try and get out of this. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like you're and Jennifer Jason Lee, amazing actress. Love. Yeah. Her, you know, but it's like her character in this. It's like you're just you're doing what people tell you you should do the whole time. Yeah. From start to fertilization to oh. <laughs> termination, you're doing yeah. everything people are saying you should fucking do. I agree. I agree. So um, I will say the one thing I liked about this was her brother, her brother, Brad, um, having her back. Sometimes you can be there for someone and you don't have to judge them or mm-hmm. rat them out or, you know, tell on them. Sometimes you can just be the best kind of support, and that's a, a and that's good for Brad because he was that I think in that moment. Brad. And yeah. and I and I think the reason he was, I think this when you think how he thought his life was going so bad, I think he looked at this and said, "Shit could be messier." That's you know? true. Yes, shit it's could be messier. Like, I mean, it's a protective thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm a brother. I know how it is. Anytime, I'm a young bro. I'm the baby, but still. Anytime with a sibling. Like it's like, so it, it, some people it hate is, each other though in this you know, world, right? But when you've got that sibling thing, like you do, I want to protect you. But at the same time, it is kind of weird because, like, you know, you, you, when you look at this and you think back, like Brad, like I'd be like, 
who fucking did this? Who did this to you? Yeah. I would uh, want to know. Now, before we give your six pack. Yes. I want to say something about Damone. I, I'll All say right. something about Damone. All right. He actually did try to live up to his promise. He was trying to call in debts and things of that nature. But I feel the shame of failing and falling short got the better of him. He could have just been honest and told her that he came up short and he didn't have enough to help her. But here's the thing. We need to remember that he too probably has some complicated feelings and he could have dealt with them a little better. That's all. He is just as young. You know, we can't just say, Oh, he did this to her. They did it to each other. And he has feelings that are probably extremely complicated. Didn't handle them well, but, I mean, he's what, 15, 16 years old? How yeah. is he supposed to handle them? He could have at least given her a ride. He promised or, half. Or called her and said, hey, I'm $75 sorry. $75 and a ride. And then He you could have said, hey, up. I only have $20 and no car. He could have said anything other than nothing. Right. That's my opinion. Like, he could have said anything. But I want to give you your oh, six no. pack. He had a car. We know that. Because oh, it had prick written on it. Yeah, yeah. He could have, yeah, he could have given her the ride. So he could have done something, but I feel, I feel he had complicated feelings. I think he had shame because he was trying. If he really didn't care, he would have, they would have never shown us the scene of him trying to call in the debts. And that's the thing. I don't know. It's like he tried, but at that point, so like, to me, that's like, I'm going to try and do all the things that I can do right now. Remember he's a high schooler. I'm done. He's a high schooler. What does he know to do? That's the thing. I don't know. Knows how to come in a woman's vagina. Well, that, yeah. I mean, like I said, they both were complicit in that. I'm going to hit your six pack because you have. All right. I'm going to give my six pack to Linda getting revenge on Damone for Stacy. That was vandalism at its finest. And Linda is a good friend. Yeah. Like. I, I'm not saying it's right, but hey, I know little prick like you're getting revenge on your girl for your girl. You're doing it. You're like, she says he's not going to get away with this. She did stuff to him. So here's my thing. Here's, here's that's why I'm a little bit murky on this. It's hold like, on. here's it. Here's no I'm one murky got away. On, he got to He get away with uh, not having the money. On. Here's my question. I, I was murky on this, too. Here's my question. Did she at least do enough damage to his car to offset the cost for the abortion? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, more than, more than. So, there you yeah. go. So, there you there's go. At least there's some kind of jailhouse justice. I don't know. But does, did he deserve justice is my question. I don't know. Like I said, it's complicated. This is it a complicated is. situation. It is. It's, it Both is complicated. parties are at fault for something. And we, you know, that's what makes it hard. It's not just and one person, is it? Makes it hard. Yeah. <laughs> so the worst, the worst it, joke it, to make. It I was, guess. and I'm sorry. But no, like, <laughs> but no. <laughs> it was. Stacy, which again, I'm not condoning or defending anybody here. It's like you got the whole situation. Stacy put him. You know, and I don't agree with You're Damone. You're not saying anything. No, listen, I know, I know. And I'm, I'm going back to... <laughs> I totally disagree with Damone saying you wanted it more than I did. Okay? Not I disagree. You're right. I disagree. I, totally I think disagree they wanted that. it equal. Well, but actually, she pulled him into that situation they, a little more. Ooh, hold on. No, they both did. He asked for because the tea, I guess. He he asked for the tea. Guy I iced tea? Yeah. Like that right there is like doing a fuck. But then I, she's the one who I took him in, said, I you can get the, the trunks took, and the she took him into the house, but then she took him into the pool house and was like, Hey, you gotta change. Here you go. So yeah. I don't know. It's like I I could just say that but that was... this I think this sorry, like this is more reason that hey, if you're gonna have an abortion, you both pay for it. Or Bring a condom. Okay, are we ready? Yes. Jeff Spicoli is a stoner and surfer who annoys his 
history teacher, Mr. Han. One night during a joyride with his friend, Spicoli wrecks the car of Ridgemont star football player Charles Jefferson. Spicoli covers up the damage by making it look like the car was destroyed by fans of Ridgemont sports rival Lincoln High School. When Ridgemont plays Lincoln, Jefferson, furious about his car, brutally tackles several of Lincoln's players and almost single-handedly wins the game. On the evening of the graduation dance, Mr. Hand visits Spicoli's house and informs him that he must make up the eight hours of class time he has wasted over the school year. I'm surprised it's only eight. Anyways, they have a history session that lasts until Mr. Hand is satisfied that Spicoli has understood the lesson and the two show that they respect each other. I love, uh, I love that you, um, let's see. I, I'm going to, we can hit our six packs here. How about that? All right. You go first. Spicoli is a six pack without a doubt. He is one of the most iconic characters of all time. There's he, when you say Spicoli, like makes me think uh, of Spumoni. Makes me think of Spumoni, the Italian ice cream. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> he, he's a he's a six pack. There's like and when you like I'm sure you right. saw when, uh, they did, when they did the uh reenactment online. Yeah. The Oh with uh, Shia LaBeouf. Yes. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, Shia LaBeouf. Damone did not say that because Shia LaBeouf was not born yet. <laughs> no, I said that. He is when you have that, it's like that's a character and not it, it's a character you know it's yeah you know what i mean like when you got people playing other characters in movies yeah this is its own fucking character like no he owned that if you know what i will say this and, and i'll hit i'm going to hit my six pack too um because my six pack is mr hand because i think they played well together and uh, but the problem with me, it's hard not to think of him as Popeye's father from the movie Popeye. But I'll tell but, you what. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, can I interrupt? Mr. For a second. Hand was yeah. in the movie, the horror movie Popcorn. If we're going okay. back to horror movie stuff, just saying. Okay. We've got our we've we've gone into our uh, B movie slasher shit. Horror a little movies. too much. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm giving you the scope of everything here. All but the I want to say in the movie that we're in horror movies. I love Mr. Han and, and Spicoli's interaction. And it's almost like Spicoli and Mr. Hand are in a totally different movie. Like it's like another movie going on while the other parts of this movie happen. Like we said, it's not very linear and there's and the only overarching story is the Stacy thing. So when you think about it, Spicoli's like in a different movie, he's in a movie where he wrecks the uh, star football player's car and has a thing with the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, nothing about abortions and, and having sex, it's <laughs> getting stoned with Eric Stoltz and uh, what's his name? The other guy, for, <laughs> Dr. Green from ER, you know, like, like that guy. But yeah, I mean, just it's, he's in a and different Anthony movie. Edwards, Anthony Edwards. That's it. Anthony Edwards. He's in a different movie. You know, it's just weird. It, it's totally weird, but I love it. And I love it's, Mr. Hand. You know, it's really funny that when you say that, it's like, we've got these stoner secondary characters that are mega stars. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. On top of everything else, which I think is funny about this movie. It's like, the movie is great, but you're like, there's these bit parts by people. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, Nicholas Cage is in this Eric Stoltz, Anthony Edwards. What? And, and Sean Penn played stoner? stoners. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. And, and what's his name? The football player. I mean, yeah. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker, who I love Forrest Whitaker in a movie called uh collar of money. I love him when he plays the hustlers. Just to, he, he plays it so well. I love Forrest Whitaker and everything. Cause he's, you've seen the crying game. I know all there is to know about the crying game. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I don't know if we'll ever do that one. If someone wants us to, you have to pay for that one, but this is up to you, man. You're up. All right. In the end, Mark and Stacy start dating again, and Mark makes peace with his best friend, Damone. Brad takes a job at a convenience store and is promoted to manager after foiling an armed robbery with some help from an oblivious Spicoli. Righteous. Want to use the bathroom. 
<laughs> Simone is busted scalping Ozzy Osbourne tickets and is forced to take a job at 7-Eleven. Linda attends college in Riverside and moves in with her abnormal psychology professor. Spicoli saves Brooke Shields from drowning and blows the reward money, hiring rock band Van Halen to play at his birthday party. Mr. Han maintains his belief that everyone is on dope. Yes. Um, I love I love uh, summaries uh, yeah. in movies. I love uh, when they do this. I would say I love when they do that, but I was gonna I was gonna give the fact real quick on that with with these summaries. Heckerling wanted to keep the characters' fates open ended, yes. but Universal Studios mandated that she end the movie with updates for each character, just like 1973's American Graffiti. Um, and I have a commentary on that, but if you had something you wanted to say first, no, that was it. That was oh, just okay. crazy to me. Okay, the the uh, the I one thing I was how, say, I wonder how it, if that was how it was going to end before the. It just makes me wonder: is that how she planned it to end? With yeah, that know, would be weird if it just you know, ended and we didn't get the the Brad scene. Because, like to me, it's almost it's Brad. I'm like, good job, you made it to. You got promoted. He peaked. He did what he wanted. Like you peaked. <laughs> that's his goals. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's like we were talking earlier about how this is Brad, but what the fuck are your goals? That must be his goal. Like, it's to be the, the manager dude? at a place. That's it. We got you. Got trumped at the end. There's nothing else. This is it. You want to know something though? If he is the manager at that little pl- uh, convenience store. I bet by now, if it's a chain, he's like a director or, or an area man. Like he, he is right. Or like at the time, by 10, 15 years later, he's probably moved up that chain. And so Spoli is still working there, flipping the taquitos. Yeah. The roller. <laughs> All right, Brad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Now that was good stuff. Uh, the Van Halen thing. What's funny though, is Van Halen was good then. But they were a little. 1984 was their best album, and that's not happening for another year or two. So that would have been better time to hire them with that good music. It's just my opinion. That's <laughs> all so I'm saying. Uh, but Damone, do you really think Damone would end up at a 7 Eleven forever? He, he's going to make us some scratch, get enough money uh, to, to get his operation no. back up. You know it. That no, dude ain't working at 7 Eleven. I do think that because I think Damone is still probably living with his parents. He's probably a little emotionally scarred. He yeah. went through a lot just the same with as Stacy. His mini bar in his bedroom. You know, people forget that emotionally he went through the same sense of loss, probably. So there's a, you know, he probably has some issues that maybe he uh, is living with his so. parents. Morgan. I, I know you so. don't think so. I think, you know, you know, I'm saying, like, I think Damone in this movie was more concerned about his friendship with Mark. In the end than losing a potential baby. Do you think that's what we needed is a scene at the end where Damone and Stacy have a conversation and they work it out a little bit because it feels like that's what we needed before he made up with Ratner before that, like sometime before that. Because, well, I feel like if you had that, you can almost kind of take the title away from the movie. Fast times at Ridgemont High. I guess. I mean, these were fast times. This is kind of the point of the movie. Fast times. There's stuff going on. I don't think, like, I'm not saying it should not have happened, but yeah, I think like, that, uh, yeah, Damone was Damone. Like, I think that's the way you got to look at it. And I guess, I guess, you know, he. I think for when you think about it, like when you really when you watch that movie, it's like that whole part of it. It was both of them saying, no, we got to fix this. Get rid of it. Here's the thing I got to say about this. So he's now friends with Mark Ratner. Is this abortion a secret between him and Stacy that they never talk about that Mark will never know? I don't know. And if Mark ever found out, how do you think he would really feel about his friend? I, I don't think. There's well, no way he knows about that and makes up with him. I, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. There's no world where that happens. See, I don't know when I like Mark because he cares about Stacy. 
he does, but Mark already knew Damone had sex with her. So, but he didn't know that part of it. He didn't. I don't know what that would have. And if changed. he know, if he knew that, it's interesting. And he knew how much he yeah. hurt her. There's no way. While they say bros before hoes, that it's is not really true. It's it's an interesting point. I give you that. I don't it's know. It's not really true. The the bros do not come before hoes. That's all I'm saying. You know. <laughs> you like that? Schmo that flows. He knows. All you. right. Well, that's that movie. That's, that's it. our takes. Man. If you like our takes, let us know. Email hey. us. Whatever you want. And before that, before Dickhead keeps going on here. I know. I was just saying, hey, if they like it, if they want to talk, you know, because it's some he- heavy situations we talked about. It, it is. It is. My, they and might want to have a real conversation. Memorabilia time. What do you, Mike Damone, want to own from this movie? Well, I saw what you wanted. And, <laughs> You're mad because I picked And my it. secondary thing was going to be Brad's um, uh, Captain Hook fish and chips outfit would have been cool. Yeah, that'd have been cool. But I said uh, Damone's piano keys scarf, which was kind of stylish. That was pretty badass. I would yeah. say, and he and he sells music tickets, like you know, he sells concert tickets, and he wears that's kind of like uh, he was kind. His jacket was kind of cool. He had a whole vibe, so you know that right there. Like he has a vibe. He doesn't come he does. play stays of praise, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's the attitude. That's the attitude, man. All right, um, what do you got? I'm going to say Phoebe Kate's bikini. Is it so that she's fully nude? So yeah, no, you take it away. I get to see the whole. <laughs> this is like where I say, if I'm going to have something displayed, the oh. bikini, because I'm like, that's, that's it. Yeah. Like you put that on display and be like, that's the jerk off corner for everybody <laughs> right there. But I will say, can I give a, you got to give two. Your secondary, I'm gonna yeah, get a secondary, which is a little kind of off and out there. But I will say, if I was gonna give a secondary thing for a small thing, yeah, from that movie, the guy's sunglasses during the test. Oh yeah, where he had the diagram. Yeah, and so that would be cool. That pair of sunglasses would that actually would be, be really cool. That would be. But cool. I gotta go. Phoebe Kate's bikini. Sorry. I mean, yeah, it was too well, iconic. I, it's too I also, iconic. I also thought Spicoli's Vans would have been cool, but. Oh well, yeah, because I had a <laughs> at the beginning hit my head on my own shoes, so. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking moron. All right. Cool. <laughs> Are we ready to rate this bitch up? Are you ready for this? Rate it up. Okay, so this movie uh, is pretty awesome. In many ways, it was ahead of its time because there wasn't anything like it uh, out there. As a matter of fact, I would say you think about movies like this that are generational high school movies. American Graffiti was a good comparison because for the time it came out, people looked at it that way. People looked at uh, Clueless that way. Looked at, uh, what was it, Super Bad that way. Like there's a bunch of movies that when you look at them, they're just iconic. And I think this is on that list. So yeah, it's definitely a great movie uh, that I enjoyed. It has a few generic moments that don't age well. One I didn't mention during the thing is when Spicoli's having the dream and he drops the fag word. Those yeah. guys are fags. Are fags. Yeah. I mean, it sounds funny, but ultimately it's, you know, now, but that's through the lens of now. Back then, we heard it. We're like, oh, that's hilarious. Because, you know, we were what we call insensitive pricks in 1982. Yes, we were. <laughs> well, we still are now, but. <laughs> but just a little bit, a little more sensitive, just not as bad. So that didn't, that didn't age well. But other than that, I think it's an excellent movie. Um, it's not quite in the toppest tiers of movies, but I give it 19 cans. Wow. I am going to say kind of what you did as far as there's some things in it that you maybe don't like or kind of cringe at and Rob Johnson or where the fuck his name was. But it was 
part of the movie. It was part of the time. And there's some there's some movies I, I won't give that a pass on. This one I kind of have to because of what the movie was and was doing. And one thing we didn't talk about earlier. When we were going to do this movie, you had a problem with how do we go into this movie? Because it's like there's not like much of a plot in a sense. So the way we broke it down and what I realized is like there's not a huge plot because it's it's one of those movies where it's like every fucking character you want to follow you want to see what's going on with them you have a vested interest in each character you're like i i don't even care what's going on what the plot is i i want to see what everybody's fucking doing here because that's high school too it's like i want to yeah. see what every fucking person's there i got to tell you like I have some things I could knock it for, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to. I have to give I I have to give it a 24. Fuck it. It is a perfect movie. I have to give it a 20. Like, how is it not for what it is at that time? I can't not give this a Uh, how you're grading it. I get it. I I can't not give this a 24. Like, I, I really feel like like. There's you no can't, way I know you can't knock it for sex in a dugout because it's supposed right. to feel cheap. It's supposed it's to feel supposed cheap. It's supposed to be there. It's supposed to do that. And I could knock it several points for that, but I have to look you at it. You could knock it a point for a fag. I, yes, I absolutely could have and I almost did. For There were several things I almost knocked it for, but I'm like, no, I can't not give it a 24 for what it is. And like, this is like, one of the gold standards for teen high school movies. Okay. I can't. Wow. Wow. I what's to. I have to, man. I, I, what's our rating then with You're that? Surprised, That's, huh? I'm surprised. I'm fucking surprised. I, you know what? I figured you'd be right around me. Like I, I figured you wouldn't be perfect, uh, but you could be a 20. No, I, you could be times, an 18. I have to. I like it, Fast times, I like it's one of those like I feel like I have to give it that. That's okay, man. Now that you've done that, what's our app? We are at twenty one point five. And what's what's next to that one? Twenty one point five. We also have Big. Ooh, that's a better movie. You gave a twenty four. I gave a nineteen. So we flip flopped. Oddly. And big has underage sex, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's like full size body, but hey, underage brain. Toy Story. Is that twenty one point five? Yep. Oh, wow, these are great movies. None of these are bad movies. Let's put it big, that way. Big Lebowski is twenty one. Mall Rats, twenty one. All these are great movies. Uh, Clerks twenty one point two five. When Harry Met Sally twenty one. That should be that's a better movie than this. Pretty Woman, twenty one. What did I give when Harry met Sally? Uh twenty three. Yeah, it's a better movie than this. Okay. That's I think that's most of in that range. Wait, twenty one and a half. Breakfast Club. <laughs> Another iconic teen movie. Yeah. Um that I didn't bring up earlier. But yeah, that makes it that's interesting. There you they go. They both had a mark in a different way. And, and, and as you can see, and I think with those two movies, you can see the change in high school attitudes from 1982 to 1985 or 86 or whatever that was. See, and, you know, and that's the thing where when I was rating this, I'm like, it's not just about that time period. It's the way they did that movie. I'm like, it's aren't fucking brilliant. Like. I give you that. They it's a great movie. It. I gave it 19. And That's pretty fucking high. But, but my thing is too, like, which again, I'm not trying to defend it or tell you to change anything with your thoughts. I'm not on changing. Like, it's crazy that they did that movie. And we just said, there's really not much of a plot. No, there's not. They made this movie where it's like, it's a pulp fiction. Isn't that like, the greatest you movie? You just fucking follow everybody. I don't even care about the plot. I just want to fucking see what's going on right now. What do but, we have days to confuse ranked at? But the, the, the difference with this, because that, that, that to me is the most comparable dazed is 22.5. Yeah. Days is a better I, movie, but, uh, yeah. 
But when you think about Days and Confused, this movie and Breakfast it's Club, all shit going on, and yeah. there's no plot. There's not a huge plot, but yeah. shit but there's going on. Great characters and stuff, yeah, happening, yeah. And that's the thing: great characters, great actors, and you're like. Well, you're in, you're locked in. I just want to watch this. I don't like, I don't fucking care. I just want to fucking watch what's going on. I'm like, all right, done. All right. Are we ready to close this out? I think so. All right. We would like to thank you for listening. We also want to remind you to join our Patreon so you can get some of that bonus content and other fun stuff. For example, we're going to be dropping some bonus, bonus episodes of us discussing certain things. We haven't really made our minds up on all of it, to be honest, but you know, look for it. Remember, you can go to SodaPopCultureClub.com for all things related to the show, including your chance to make movie suggestions, and our episode schedule is there as well. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and we have a Twitch channel. Now, we want to give you a little tease as to what next week's movie may be. See if you can guess what it is. Uh, Scientology is not the only religion. <laughs> And as always, we want to thank you for listening.